Greetings. This is Arvette McLean of Speak the Universe Listens. As a very young person, I always felt that I carried the weight of the world on my shoulders, having to make grown up decisions in order to survive a life marked with physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. While my face was smiling on the outside, on the inside, I always secretly cried and felt miserable. However, over the years, I learned some gems that helped to turn my life around. I now get to live the life of my dreams, filled with love, travel, and wonderment. And I am absolutely passionate about sharing what I have learned with you. If you want to live your best life, tune in each week as I, along with some amazing guests, share these life-changing gems with you inspired to be more, do more, have more. Greetings. I just wanted to take a moment to say that as we move through this trying time of transition as it relates to the coronavirus, I know that a lot of people will be in a place of struggle. Um, there may be some challenging times ahead, but I've been so grateful to hear stories of people doing great things to help each other. And I just want to keep encouraging us all to do that. I know that the human spirit is going to shine brightly during this time. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm so pleased that things that I'm hearing already. Um, and the thing that I really want to say is that we want to make sure we keep ourselves healthy, our minds healthy, keep focused on what we do want, and realize that this too shall pass in some kind of way we're going to get to the other side and we're going to be better for the experience. And I would tell you all um, from us, from the team, we send you all nothing but positive energy um, during these trying times. We send you our love, our light, and uh, everybody make sure you take care of yourself. All right. See you in the upcoming podcast. Greetings and welcome to today's episode of Speak the Universe Listens. Today's topic is the divinity in you. And I have joining me Deborah. Hi. How are Hi, you? <laughs> Good. Good. To be back. Thank you. I'm glad you are here. Thanks for having me. Yes. And so talking about the divinity, do you think that there's a divine presence in all of us? Very good question. And I absolutely do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the divine present resides in all and I am and always will be you know on a journey to learn more about my divinity to have a closer relationship um, and a, a more a better understanding of God and the universe um, which I've come to know are connected in my personal relationship to me, they are one. Um, I grew up um, understanding God, I think, in a, in a way that's typical for most Christians. And um, my understanding has expanded since then. So how? what was your previous understanding? So previously, you know, the basic um, understanding was when you're in Bible study and God is kind of personified so they give human qualities mm -hmm. to this powerful spirit um, and in some ways when I was younger it was quite fearful to me to learn about this powerful spirit kind of being and I think I, it was fearful because I didn't have a full understanding but you know as I grew older and um, did more research and dove a little deeper into um, spiritual practice and religion, I became aware of that spirit, the spirit of God being present in myself and in everybody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the, in the church, you're taught that you're a part of God and the spirit. So. Yeah, I think it's interesting what you said about personifying God, because I think we have a tendency to think that um, 
God is like us, just bigger and more powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, we always hear we're made in the image of God. But I think when we personify God, we're saying God is made in our image. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it I is. think I think it's fl- I think we have it flipped. Mm-hmm. Like the way we perceive of God and we perceive of God as a, a single entity mm-hmm. that's bigger, all knowing, and all powerful, mm-hmm. versus us being perceived made in God's image, which we are bigger. <laughs> right. We are more powerful and more knowing. So, and we're part of that, that flow. We're connected mm-hmm. into the, the essence of what God is. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up the connected portion. Mm-hmm. Um, I think with religion, there's so many different types. Um, the goal is, of course, to connect communities. But sometimes, at least my personal experience, it made it seem like a little bit more of a division. Mm-hmm. So um, I gravitate more towards the connectiveness, you know, being a part of God, um, everyone having the divinity within them. So that connects me to them as well. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Yeah, yeah. And so, of course, you know, in the title of this podcast is Speak the Universe Listens, Mm -hmm. because that is me recognizing that everybody does have their own conception of what God is or um, what that infinite source is to them. And it's a personal relationship, Mm -hmm. um, and everybody's supposed to have a different way. Um, And so that's why I say universe, instead of specifying any specific Mm -hmm. um, way of calling God, because it does um, speak to the oneness. So Mm -hmm. uni is one and verse is song. So it's like the the oneness, the common song that plays between all of us and all things. And so when I say the universe is listening, I'm saying God is listening, infinite source is listening, mm-hmm. that energy that flows throughout all things yes. is listening. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That is so beautifully put. <laughs> yep, absolutely. The universe, the song, the connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so important, too, that we really feel into that connection, mm-hmm. and that it's not just words. Um, because when we really understand our connection, we're not separate from God or we're not separate from this source. Mm-hmm. We're the same. We're a part of it. Mm-hmm. And so when you realize you're a part of it, then it's easier to step into the flow yes. of it. But when you feel like you're separate from it, it's almost like if you're praying to God, asking um, for something is saying, I don't already have it, mm. and I need you to give it to me. Right. But really, we already have access to it um, because we're in the flow of it. Everything that you can see, mm-hmm. e- things that you can't see, everything is all a part of this flow, and everything is available to mm-hmm. us at all times. And That's we just true. have to know how to tap into that flow. That's so true. Yep available at all times. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think that can sometimes be easy. It can seem easy to forget. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get so caught up into the moment and what's happening now that you forget you have the ability at any time Mm -hmm. um, to shift, you know. But that's a beautiful point. Yeah. Um... I'm no expert when it comes to religion or spirituality, you know, as I mentioned, every day I'm here, I'm growing into and learning new things, Um, but I am an expert in my own experience Mm -hmm. with, um, you know, my understanding of God, religion, the universe, and um, it's such a, a wonderful thing to to know that you are connected in such a way where you call upon everything that's happening in your life, you have to recognize that you have um, called it in your life, the good and the not so good. Mm -hmm. Um, So in recognizing that, it allows you to take a moment to be uh, mindful and intentional about Mm -hmm. what you ask for or about, you know, 
what you say. Mm -hmm. So I was brought up in the church, and so I do, you know, understand um, some of the things that have helped guide me on my journey, like reading scripture and different things in my religion um, just help me to remember that uh, when they say, like, the power of the tongue, it it's a universal, like, it may have come from the Bible, but it universally um, connects and, and weighs so much with everyone, mm -hmm. you know, because you do have the power in what you're saying, what you ask for, what you what you kind of don't ask for, you know, mm -hmm. there's power in that. I remember being a young person, and I don't know if everybody goes through this or not, but I definitely went through, like, wondering, is God real? Is that something people just made up? And so I just went through, like, questioning all of that. And then when I was a middle-aged teenager, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what happened. But all of a sudden, I just, I just became so in love with God, and I used to go to church every single day, and because I, I grew up in the Catholic church, so the church was open every day, mm -hmm. and there wouldn't necessarily be anyone in there, so I would go there, and it would just be me mm -hmm. and God, mm -hmm. and I used to talk to God, and um, I felt like we were best friends. Mm -hmm. And so when other people would say, well, God this and God that, I, it's like I had a secret, like, yeah, but <laughs> God is my best friend. <laughs> right. Like it was just this personal mm -hmm. um, relationship. And then um, something happened. Well, actually, a family member got raped, a close family mm -hmm. member. Wow. And when that happened, I just wasn't okay. Right. Yeah, and I got yeah. mad at God, and I was like, I don't ever want to talk to you again. Like, how could you let something like that happen? Mm -hmm. And so I didn't, I stopped praying. I, you know, everything, I just cut off my communication. Mm -hmm. And I was um, very separate in my mind from God. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was talking to this, this guy, um, by, this, by now I'm in college, and I was telling this guy, like, because um, he was studying to be a priest, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't you know, I don't pray, you know, da, da 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 I was like, and I don't understand, why would God let me get so close mm -hmm. and then basically turn his back on me? And he said, maybe if you didn't have that experience, then rather than you being mad, you would not even believe in God. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it's kind of smart, yeah. <laughs> you wow, know. Um, yeah. yeah, and so, but that's kind of how um, my feeling as a younger person. Mm -hmm. But just over time, you know, just my connection, it just grew and changed, mm -hmm. and, and my understanding that God is in me, mm -hmm. and just really making that shift, it, it just changed everything for me. Yeah. I, I can I can relate to that because there there was a particular moment too where I re recognized that there wasn't a, a separation as as I had thought it was you know like I didn't have to go to church although I enjoy it um, God wasn't in the church mm -hmm. God was always there mm -hmm. you know so definitely within and like you said just understanding that. You know, you can have that wonderful relationship at, and call on God at any time or, you know, it's always around. And then when I think of things like that, then I'm like, we can't make a mistake. Like, everything that we do is perfect and in perfect timing. Mm -hmm. um, and so although sometimes we feel like, you know, we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing or we made the biggest mistake of our life and we should have went left and instead we went right, like, the whole barrage but um when i think about that i'm connected to god and everything is then to me everything is in perfect timing and yes. even though from our limited view we might not be able to see that mm -hmm. but i feel like every single thing that we do expands god right. like i feel like the universe god is uh expanding mm -hmm. every day right. like we are expanding 
what God is. Yes. Yeah. And that allows us to grow closer mm -hmm. or have a deeper connection. Um, and, the, and to connect easier with others because they're, they also have their own connection and relationship with God. Yeah, and, and I really feel like it's just important that we go within mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily try to follow a prescription for who God should be for you, yes. but that God is an indiv uh, individual experience for each person. Yes. And, um, yeah, just finding... What does what does that mean to you? And, and I'm using the term God, and um, but I could just as easily say universe or mm -hmm. infinite source or you know infinite creator, our creator. Any of those terms that actually resonate with a person, that's what term they should use. But that's that's what I'm talking about when I say God. I'm talking about that um, that source that is is the I guess the birth mm -hmm. of us right. yeah creator mm -hmm. of us um and that runs and flows through all things yeah. so yeah but finding going inside and finding god there mm -hmm. and finding your own connection to right. god yeah i said you, i think you said an important piece when you said that it's individual you know everybody's connection is going to be different and that's a part of your life's journey you know mm -hmm. is to discover what and who God is to you or what the universe, you know, that connectedness, how that feels, how that looks, what it is for you. Mm -hmm. That's what's most important. Yeah. Yeah. So like just really going inside and finding that personal relationship, um, I guess it would be different for everyone how mm -hmm. to do that. But I guess the first thing would be to say that's what you want to do. Just set right. your intention yes. for doing that. And I know I shared, I think I shared on last week's podcast about how when I actually realized that I'm connected to the source of all that mm -hmm. is um, just in the whole fact of once I realized that no matter how I show up in the world, that it's okay mm -hmm. um, because I'm a part of all that is, because I'm a part of God, that I, I can't make a mistake. Right. And so for me, that was that was my first connection um, as me being a part of the stream versus God being something that's separate from me. Right. So I used to, like I said, I, I saw God as a friend, my best friend. Mm -hmm. um, I saw God as a something outside of myself, mm -hmm. and that I I prayed asking for right. things. I mean some. I didn't always pray to ask, but what I'm saying is I didn't see that power within. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was being granted mm -hmm. something. And so it wasn't until I started making that shift that um, God is in me. Mm -hmm. Was I able to start finding the power within me to create the kind of life that I would love? Right. That's beautiful. <laughs> yes. My, my journey is similar. You know, I was... I always felt that there was something more than what I was experiencing through um, being told about what God is and, and the connection with the universe. Um, so, you know, just, just doing my own research and just through my own experience and knowing that there's something more than what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. There's something, I'm feeling something bigger. Um, and understanding what prayer did for me was a, um, a, a way to ask that question and then meditate. So knowing what, setting my intention, knowing what I wanted to know, and then waiting for that through meditation. So having the conversation through prayer, and then listening through meditation. Mm -hmm. Just that repeated, you know, and just, I just always had this knowing that I was going to, that, that the connection was already there and it was just going to expand, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. And so one of the things that um, I, I always think is cute, because I always think 
I come up with witty stuff. I might be the only one that thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that um, a lot of times people will say is in God's timing, mm. not in man's timing. Right. And so they'll say, I, I didn't get this because God didn't want me to have it. And I'm like, don't blame that on God. <laughs> Why are you blaming that on God? You know, um, mm-hmm. and, and of course, I understand what, I understand exactly mm-hmm. what they're saying. But um, my interpretation of what really is happening is we weren't ready for it. Mm. And we didn't allow ourselves to get it. Oh. And so um, there's, there's, I don't believe that there's anything that I want that God doesn't want me to have. Right. Like, why wouldn't God want me to have the things that I want? Right. And so I might not be able to have it because I haven't prepared myself for it. Mm-hmm. I haven't made myself ready mm-hmm. um, to receive it. I haven't done what I needed to do in order to receive the things, mm-hmm. the desires of my heart. But I feel like um, what when we have desires, our desires are for us. Like, we have them for a reason. Right. And so... Part of our journey is birthing our desires. And it's like the world is waiting for us to do those things. Once we give birth to the things of our heart, I think that's when we've made our true contribution to the world. Yeah, I agree. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and and I think it's the difference between... Um, like some desires, we things that we say we want, mm-hmm. we just think we want it mm-hmm. because that's what we're told we want. Right. Yeah. But it's not from our heart. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, like you say, meditating, praying, and then waiting for the answer and allowing, mm-hmm. that's what gets you in touch with your own divinity. Mm-hmm and the desires of your heart that really want to be birthed through you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you're a part of the creation. You know, mm-hmm. you're allowing, you are the, you're allowing the, cre- to, the creativity that you have within. You are the creator. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um, I guess I would encourage everyone yes. to really... Uh, if if you don't already see the divinity within, then to take the time to um, put the question out there, like, how can I feel this divinity within? Mm-hmm. Um, how can I understand my connection to all that is and really feel into that connection? Um, because sometimes it's just words. Yes. But we need to do the work, and the work really is just taking the time to be quiet mm-hmm. going within putting out into the universe what it is that you would love and then waiting for the answer or allowing the answer to come to you and like once you really can feel mm-hmm. the divinity within yourself it's a game changer that's right <laughs> that's right because mm-hmm. you always know where to go to continue that feeling Exactly. That connection mm-hmm. forever. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much Thanks for joining for me. me. All yes. right. It's been a pleasure. Good. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, Arvette. This is Deborah. Bye.